So thank you very much for the invitation to this uh, nice meeting. Um, so th this is the, the last uh, talk today and I think everyone is, uh, everybody is exhausted. So I will try to do something soft and not too long and um, feature more ideas than technical results. And also I will make a blackboard uh, talk. It's going to be smoother. Um, so I'm, uh, the, the, in a certain sense, the topic is perfect and fits perfectly with the, the other talks in the afternoon because uh, so there were many talks on uh, momenta and generating series of momenta. And I'm going to talk about generating series of momenta but in non-commutativity or quantum probability, so going to non-commutative. So, but there will be a strong connection in a certain sense. So... Um, It's not the, the title, but this is the idea of what I'm going to explain. And I should mention it is based on a recent uh, joint work with Kourouche uh, and Mifa. Nicolas Tapia and Lorenzo Zambotti. So what I'm going to explain is essentially that there, there, there are some, in the non-commutative case, in the commutative case everything collapses, the structures are uh, pretty simple. But in the non-commutative case there are many interesting uh, group theoretical structures that you can uh, devise on, uh, on generating series. And so um, uh, this is the, the idea I would like to feature. So, uh, but I should start what explaining what I mean by non-commutative probability, so um, or quantum probability. So it means instead of considering uh, a commutative algebra of random variable, usually in non-commutative probability, one starts from an associative algebra. and a state map, which for me will be simply a linear form, unital linear form. On A. And the classical examples are random matrices, where algebras of random matrices where you take the expectation of the trace of the matrix and uh, what happens in quantum physics. So when you take vacuum expectations of operators in quantum physics, these are the two basic examples in a certain sense of what is a non-commutative probability space. But then there are many other examples. And uh, <coughs> so there are many things to say about generating series in this setting, but I will concentrate on one particular aspect, but which is very important in practice, which is the link between um, momenta and cumulants from uh, the generating series point of view. I won't always mention uh, that the, the series I'm dealing with are coming from generating series of momenta or cumulants, but this will be always in the background. And so uh, I will start first recalling very briefly uh, what happens in the commutative case, and then we'll move to the non-commutative one. So in the commutative case, if you start from a random variable, and I would assume, so uh, as in the, the talk of Cyril, uh, or building on the talk of Cyril, I will assume that I'm dealing with uh, random variables that have momenta at all orders, also in the non-commutative setting. So we have seen that under certain condition, under certain condition, it characterizes the distribution of x. So essentially, the momenta captures the distribution of random variables, and uh, then we know that we can introduce a generating series. I will work in the commutative case with exponential generating series. You mean e and phi is, it, is the same thing or not? Uh, sorry, e and f there was a phi. 
uh, well, phi, phi was for the non-commutative case. So I will use phi in the non-commutative yes, case uh, and e. the usual e in the commutative case. <coughs> no, just to but of course, it's the same thing. I mean, if, if your non-commutative probability space is commutative, you expect phi to be the expectation. Anyway, so... Um, and then in that, in that setting, the generating series of cumulants is uh, an also an exponential generating series. And it's simply defined as the logarithm of the uh, generating series of momentum. <coughs> So what happens in the non-commutative case? Is that um, and so cumulants? Uh, it, so the generating series of cumulants is just a transform of the generating series of momenta, and it's very useful actually to to use this series in, instead of momenta in various in or even in many problems in probability, especially lo when looking at limit distributions that, that sort of phenomena. So uh, excuse me once again, C N and M N is it the same thing or, or no? No, C C N is the coefficient of, of T N, so it depends on, on the random variable X, is the coefficient of T N in the logarithm of the generating series of uh, momenta that I defined here. So C N stands for the cumulant of for the N. So in the non-commutative case, um, things are slightly different, but um, what happens is that you, uh, you can also work with uh, generating series, so having a sort of uh, analytic combinatorics approach. And then, for example, if you look, there are several uh, non-commutative probability theories. But if you look at free probability, then uh, you will introduce also a generating series of momenta, but a usual uh, gen uh, generating series, not an exponential one. So if I start from a random variable, a non-commutative random variable A, But then the corresponding uh, generating series of momenta will be defined um, by an implicit equation. So the sort of fixed point equation defining the generating series of momenta usual generating series, not exponential, uh, sorry, of cumulants. But there's another approach which is used also in the classical case, which is based on um, more on algebraic combinatorics. So in the classical case, uh, this approach would read as follows. It is used in, uh, when you work with cumulants. Uh, in physics, this is classical when you move from uh, full green functions to connected green functions, which is the analog computations to this one in probability. And uh, here, the idea is to define cumulants by these uh, implicit equations. Mn is the sum over all partitions of n of uh, cp1 cpn so you can define implicitly uh, cumulants that weights it's completely equivalent to this formula 
<laughs> and if you look at what happens in, um, in non-commutative probability, you're going to use the same formula, but to replace the, uh, <laughs> the set of partitions you're using. So here we have all partitions, all set partitions of n. If you, um, if you look at all non-crossing partitions, and use the same formula, but you restrict the sum to non-crossing partition, you would get the definitions of free cumulants. Uh, if you restrict to Boolean or interval partitions, so interval partitions are simply the partitions where you cut the set of integers into uh, connected pieces. You will get what is called Boolean probability and Boolean cumulants. Uh, if you look uh, at all partitions, you will get what is called um, tensor probabilities and tensor cumulants. So this is this computation is then just a non-commutative version of the classical case. And there's still another theory, which is called the theory of monotone uh, probability, which is based on uh, non-crossing partitions, but uh, with weights. So there are some weights that you, you use in front of, the, of these products, depending on the non-crossing partitions you consider. So there are several uh, non-commutative probability theory, and these are the only ones which satisfy certain universal conditions. So these are the theories which are natural to consider in, uh, in non-commutative probability. Is it not the case that in joining with the weights of the last one, we find certain of the past events? Is it not the case that in joining with the weights of the last example, we find certain of the past events? Pas tout à fait, mais on peut passer de l'une à l'autre. Parce qu'en fait, uh, sorry, <laughs> yes, sorry. Uh, the point is that you have you have several families of partitions, and they are, they are included uh, into each other. They have relations to each other, so you can play the game of passing from one probability theory to the other, and it's part of the, what people have done in uh, non-commutative probability. So what happens is that there's a, um, still another approach. to uh, non-commutative probability theories that I developed with the Kourouche Ibrahim Ifar, so <coughs> my first co-author for the, the article I'm discussing today, um, which is based on uh, Opf algebra, so on group theory, in a certain sense. But it's uh, natural to connect this approach to, uh, to the, the approach by the algebraic combinatorial one, so the approach by means of uh, partitions. What I would expl like to explain today is how to connect, uh, uh, in a certain sense, the group theory point of view on generating series of momenta and cumulants to the approach by means of generating series. So uh, writing a kind of dictionary between the, the two approaches. So to do this, I have to, um, to recall all this uh, of algebraic approaches devised. And then I will, uh, I will explain or, or to translate from, from the, so this group theoretical picture to the, the point of view of uh, generating series. So assume that you start from a family A1, AN of non-commutative random variables. So for example, operators in quantum physics. And <coughs> you want to encode them uh, algebraically in a suitable way. So a way to do this is to associate to them formal variables. To build uh, the tensor algebra, 
So the set of uh, all these variables I will denote x. So you build a tensor algebra over this uh, family of variables. So the, the linear span of um, of words over the alphabet that you have chosen. But there's a next step. If you want to do things uh, correctly, you have to take the tensor algebra over the tensor algebra, which means that you are going to look at um, sentences in a certain sense, so sequences of words. So if I want a word here, uh, something like xi1, xik, here I will have sequences of uh, of words that I will denote that way, the so-called bound notation. And here, of course, a very important thing is what plays the role of the expectation value. I have to decide the way I extend uh, or I translate phi into this setting, and I would encode phi by this well, by deciding that phi applied to a word will be simply phi of uh, a one ai one ai k if I start from this word w, <coughs> and phi instead evaluated on a sequence of words will be defined by the product of phi evaluated on each word. So if you think at what I'm doing, I'm simply encoding uh, the, the, the expectation map and the momentum of the, the random variables and the multivariate momenta, so phi evaluated on uh, products of um, non-commutative random variables, I'm, I'm encoding uh, in a different way, but it's very close to the encoding by means of uh, generating um, power series. So from this you, you can understand that we are very close uh, to um, the framework of, um, of generating series. Okay, so um, now uh, I will introduce, so this is an algebra, this is a tensor algebra, so there's an associative product, the concatenation of uh, words. I will introduce on this, um, on this algebra a coproduct, so, and I describe only a section on the generators of, uh, of the double tensor algebra. It's going to be the sum over all, uh, so maybe I, I do this on an example. So I'm going to choose in all possible way a subset of uh, indices. Put the corresponding word on the left and then tensor with the, uh, the tensor product in the double tensor algebra of what remains, but uh, grouping the, the letters according to the, the blocks they belong to in the complement. So x1, x3 and uh, x5, x6. So if I do so, I'm going from the tensor algebra to, uh, to the tensor algebra, tensor the double tensor algebra. And uh, I can extend this to uh, an algebra map from uh, the double tensor algebra to itself, which means that uh, I get a uh, algebra structure. So I have to check that the, that everything fits, but it's, uh, it's easy to prove. So it's an, an op algebra which means in particular that um, there's a convolution product on the dual. So it's simply the dual of the coproduct. And uh, as, f uh, as always, when you have the, these structures, there's a group showing up the group of algebra morphism from the double tensor algebra. Well, one takes usually as yes, the uh, ground field the complex numbers in non-commutative probability. So with this product. And there's a Lie algebra 
which is the set of what are called um, infinitesimal characters from the double tensor algebra to the complex numbers. <coughs> so the bracket, the Lie bracket is simply the bracket associated to the associative product we got here. And infinitesimal characters means that uh, we look at linear forms which vanish on tensors of order higher than 2 and on the ground field. So there's a, a group theoretical way to, um, to address the computations with um, momenta and um, and cumulants in free probability. I won't, I won't explain how it works precisely, but you can guess from the, this definition that it incurs the creation, for example, of uh, non-crossing partition. If you iterate the, the co-product uh, recursively, as you do always in, uh, in these structures, you will recursively generate uh, non-crossing partitions if you do this uh, cleanly. So that's one thing. <laughs> it incurs the, the combinatorics of the, the various theories. And if furthermore you subdivide the co-product into two pieces, one that corresponds to the case in the example I've given where x1 is on the left <coughs> of the tensor product in, uh, in these formulas, and another part what, where x1 is on the right, You can make sense of the fact that this structure is encoding uh, the various genuinely non-commutative uh, probability theories in the sense that delta encodes monotone probability and gives you a way to go from um, momenta to monotone cumulants. This component uh, will correspond to free probability and this one to Boolean probability. Modulo some uh, some work to do to, to make sense of this. But it works, and this, for those who are familiar with the work of Schutzenberger, this, uh, this splitting is very, very close to the splitting of the shuffle product into two half shuffles in, uh, in classical combinatorics. It's just uh, an extension of it. So now the, the question is how to leave this group algebra picture to, um, to series. So there's a very simple observation, namely that if you look at the linear map from the double tensor algebra to the complex numbers. So if you look at a little at the linear form, uh, say chi, you can associate to it um, a generating series by looking at all words over the alphabet and so evaluating the linear form on the world and multiplying, multiplying by, by the world. So you get uh, a non-commutative generating series that is going to encode momenta, for example, if you start from, um, from the, the capital phi ma map I define. But of course, when you're doing so, you're losing a lot of information. You're keeping only the information on the linear parts so onwards. You forget what happens uh, in general on phrases. But what happens is that um, still using this, we'll be able to, to move from the, the double tensor algebra picture to series. And to do this, I will, so in this uh, set of series, S, I will say that if um, the constant component is 1, this will form uh, a set of uh, a subset of the set of generating series. So And uh, if I look instead at the generating series with a constant coefficient 0, this will form another subset of the set of generating series. 
And what happens is that they're going to correspond respectively to the um, two characters and infinitesimal characters. So, algebra map from the double tensor algebra and infinitesimal characters. So it's easy to see because uh, both, uh, both algebra morphisms for the double tensor algebra and infinitesimal characters, they are completely characterized by the action on the on words. So this means that they have a unique extension. Both have a, uh, when you know what happens on, on words, you can extend the, the, this part automatically to the, to the full thing. So if you use the dis dictionary, what, um, what do you get? You get on G1 a group structure induced by the isomorphism, which is as follows. So um, I will write this, uh, say, chi tilde of x. So if I have two series, chi tilde and uh, gamma tilde, by definition, their product will be the product of gamma tilde with chi tilde evaluated on x times gamma tilde of x. Well, this notation is an abbreviation for, um, for the fact that, uh, so chi tilde, it's uh, as a series, it's a linear combination of words times uh, coefficients. So in the words, in each word W, I will replace xi by xi times gamma tilde. So that's the rule. Anytime I have a letter, I replace this letter by uh, its product with gamma tilde. So this defines a, a, a law, a product law on G1, and uh, because it is induced by, uh, by this isomorphism, you get automatically that G1, uh, maybe I'll write this with a big dot, is a group. And so basically this group is devised to encode a generating series of momenta. Structurally, because I've seen that uh, I want to encode uh, momenta as uh, algebra maps on the double tensor algebra. Now, this um, this group uh, has nice properties, and. There are several things you can do to, to complete this dictionary between the two words. So first of all, it's possible to define um, a Lie algebra structure on G0. But here, I won't uh, enter into details, but here the idea is that um, the group law when you describe it, uh, when you expand this, uh, this formula in terms of the, the coefficients of gamma and the coefficients of uh, chi, is, uh, the expression is going to be linear in the coefficients of uh, chi tilde. And polynomial in the coefficients 
of gamma tilde. Just uh, because of the definition we've given of the coproduct and uh, what happens when you dualize uh, the coproduct to a product, and you see this uh, here already. It's just a dual, dual statement of the fact that if you start from uh, a word here, the coproduct is going to send the word to a word on the left hand side and a product of, wo of word on the right hand side. So here it's in a certain sense linear in words uh, on the left hand side and polynomial in the right hand side and it, it translates when you dualize into this property for the group law we have on, um, on G1. So this property implies that um, G0 has what is called the Prelie algebra structure. And it's actually very simple to describe. It's going to be something that you, you can uh, view on words. If you have a first word, xi1, xik, this uh, structure, the, the, the product you will get um, automatically from this observation is obtained that way. It's going to be the sum of all possible insertion of this word into this one, but keeping the word intact. So we have the sum from i equals 0 to k of xi1 or l equals 0 to k xn1 xil. You will insert the second word into it, xg1 xgl xi p plus 1 xi k. And poly algebra structure means that this product satisfies uh, the following relation A, B, C minus A, B, C is equal to A, C, B minus A, C, B. And if you anti-symmetrize this poly algebra structure, so you obtain a, a genuine uh, Lie bracket. And this Lie bracket is the one defining the, the, Lie, the Lie algebra structure on G0. So uh, we, we got with this, uh, with this uh, f first step of the construction of the dictionary, a way to make sense of group theory at the level of uh, formal uh, generating series. So now we can understand that uh, so the generating series of momenta, the classical gener generating series of momenta, is in the element of the group, whereas the, its logarithm, the, so not its logarithm because we are in a non-commutative setting, but it's the, the corresponding, the various corresponding uh, generating series of cumulants in free Boolean and monotone probabilities uh, belong to, um, to Lie algebra which is something you, you want from a, a group theoretical point of view. But uh, so when you have this observation, you can go further and ask several questions on um, what you can do out of it, if you can get extra structures out of it. And actually, you can. So. Maybe I would. I have five minutes, I think. Yes. Okay. So I, I would just explain uh, probably the the most natural question you can ask when you are at, at this point um, from the classical group uh, point of view. Usually, when you have a Lie algebra, and a group, you would like to go from the Lie algebra to the group, especially if you have formal power series. You would like to go from the Lie algebra to the group with the exponential and uh, move back using the logarithm. Well, you can do this, but it's not the, the good, uh, not the good isomorphism in that case.
And the good isomorphism is actually the one you, you would obtain by um, going back to the op algebra picture. Namely, you know that G1 is isomorphic to the set of uh, algebra maps from the double tensor algebra to the complex numbers. Here you have the, the set of infinitesimal characters on the double tensor algebra, which is isomorphic to G0. And here you can uh, you can use the logarithm and the exponential. And so the, the good uh, the good isomorphism between so set theoretic isomorphism between the Lie algebra and the group will be obtained by by composing this. And what's nice in a certain sense it can be expected if you're familiar with this but what is nice is that from the um, the non-commutative probability point of view what happens if you do so is that you're moving from a momenta so generating series of momenta to generating series of uh, um, monotone cumulants So this shows that in a certain sense this dictionary is well done in the sense that it, it really incorporates uh, in, in, the, in the group and the algebra picture uh, the phenomena you expect. And there's uh, plenty of things you, you can do. For example, you can wonder how you, you can translate this identity in terms of a splitting of the group law on G1. You can do it. Uh, so anytime you have a formula essentially involving um, um, computations with uh, joint distributions of non-computative random variables, you can use this dictionary to first uh, first uh, try to understand this with uh, of algebra pictures, so words and sentences, which are uh, very robust tool, and then uh, go to the generating series approach and see how it translates into the generating series approach. The, the, although it's not perfect because, um, and we'll conclude on this, normally when you want to when you want to compare a Lie algebra and a, and a group, you would factorize the computation using the enveloping algebra of the Lie algebra. And because everything is graded here, uh, looking at its, its completion and embedding also the, the group into the completion of the enveloping algebra. So this will be the, the natural way to, to perform computations. So because of this phenomenon, it's uh, not possible to have a sort of um, straightforward way of introducing operations uh, simultaneously on uh, G0 and G1, so on the set of all uh, uh, generating series. So you have to have a sort of case-by-case -case, uh, approach where you will decide first if your generating series encodes something which, which is of moment type, of, of cumulant type, and then, using the, the fact that you, you know what, you, what is the object you're handling, you, you reconstruct operations on this. So, the dictionary stops at a certain point because of this, but uh, still it's, uh, it can be implemented and gives a, a way to, which is what we wanted actually to reach, a way of unifying all these approaches and having a sort of uh, a global picture. Thank you. We have time for questions. Yeah. I have some like, comment. Yeah, that's, there was uh, in, um, for moments you produce cumulants, yeah, or various versions of cumulants by something polynomials in moments, yeah. Yes. Kind of a triangle or. Yes. There is another uh, thing. I don't know how what's the name. It's kind of like zeta function. Instead of taking a logarithm of, of uh, mean value of exponent x t, yeah, you consider log e e exponent of mean value of log one minus x t. X t. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I'm not sure I understand the question. So yeah, no, 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 no. I, I just, it's, 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 it's from, from moments one can construct another genetic series starting yes. from one, namely exponent of uh, uh, mean value of log one minus x t. Yes. Yeah. It's it's something which produce uh, if if you have just um, trace with the trace of matrices, it will be mm. the characteristic polynomial. 
And this also has some relations to non trivial probability. Um, for example, if you consider group algebra of free group, this it will be called something called Fugle, Fugle de Cartesian determinant, and it has very clean meaning. Uh, so you take few unitary matrices, take some non quantitative polynomial, which is, let's say, self adjoint, and then distribution of universe will be sort of probability measure, and is, this is a way to encode it. Uh, it's, it's usual moment, and uh, there was a conjecture, uh, uh, another conjecture theorem which I proved many years ago, a very bizarre result. That if you make, um, which said that if you make essentially like uh, Hilbert transform integrate by log one minus, mm -hmm. minus x, x t, you get logarithm of algebraic function. It's very similar, close to what. Okay, very interesting. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but it's really direct. It has direct meaning uh, in um, probability series. So you have, I don't know. Very hu huge size unitary matrices make this universal non quantitative level and looks as the distribution mm -hmm. of gain values, it's a way to calculate it. As so I understand, this thinks it's for like um, uh, Gaussian ensemble, yeah? It's yes, I mean, yeah, all these theories they are made for the asymptotic regime, so you, you don't catch what happens uh, for, yeah, for finite, the, even big, uh, yeah, big but not infinite, you, you don't catch. Uh, you only get the asymptotic behavior. Yeah, but it's kind of look, it's, but is it kind of like for Gaussian ensemble or not? Necessarily? Well, it was the vice for, the, in a certain sense, it, well, it was the vice, or uh, I think Philippe kno knows better the history of, uh, of the theory than I do because he was involved from the beginning. But uh, the point is that if you look at the Gaussian ensemble, um, the nice thing is that, uh, and you apply these things, the the, the f free cumulants uh, described it in a certain sense perfectly in the sense that what you get is that only the second uh, cumulant I is not going to vanish. So from this from from the this approach, you get that you really have the the, the non-commutative analog of uh, of Gaussian variables. For Gaussian variables, have only the second uh, cumulant which is not vanishing. So so this is this is the reason why. Um, so the Gaussian ensemble is, in a certain sense, is the, the analog of uh, Gaussian variable in uh, free probability. The, 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 the connection is that uh, you, can, you can recover, if you take the um, uh, classical cumulants uh, of uh, some corner of uh, a, a random matrix in, in the in six or in six and super integral, then its limit uh, is the free cumulant of the limiting distribution. Mm. So there is a, a good, Via matrix integrals, there is a, a connection directly between mm -hmm. classical cumulants and free cumulants. Mm -hmm. so that's, uh, I don't know if it's an answer, mm -hmm. but uh, it's, uh, mm -hmm. there's certainly some direct connection. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I don't know how to define algebra structures outside of this framework. Maybe there are some, but. Uh, uh, a question which is in fact perhaps related to what you said also. The, so the, uh, there is a proof of the Wigner theorem which goes to through, through such uh, uh, interplay with between combinatorix and cumulants and so on. So is there a generalization of this uh, for this uh, more general non commutative settings with the other uh, objects that you mentioned? Well, the the philosophy is that when you, when you're inside a probability theory, um, if you if you want to, so I'm not sure at what theorem you are doing at, but um, the second cumulant uh, characterizes the analog of Gaussian variables in uh, in a given non-commutative probability theory. So from, from the, the point of view of uh, Feynman expansion, that sort of things, it characterizes uh, propagators. I don't know if it's uh, an answer to your question. I'm not sure, <laughs> but okay. And, and perhaps a question from Maxime. So y you said that someone proved or conjectures No, I, I proved, but the proof is really it is very bizarre. It's not the natural proof. Uh, and what was the, the name of the guy who did the conjecture? No, no, it's, it's, it's I, I um, I for the electricity, uh, no, I actually should have proved the result. It's, it's this is my paper called non commutative identities, and there was a kind of first thing explained here. Uh, this is uh, the result about uh, this group ring or free group, 
which uh, the proof is very strange. It's uh, it's not combinatorial. It's combinatorial statement. The proof is not combinatorial. It's used uh, both Schutz and Berger and Kuchomsky, and also result from NAMP theory. Chudnovsky. Chudnovsky. Yeah, yeah, it's a very strange proof. But the structure very looks very much to what this mm -hmm. car we have with Carl. So it's okay, some kind yeah. of like uh, yes, and in fact there is even some links with lattice paths because the the, the the free group that you have, you can see it as jumps plus one minus one, and you you can see the, the problem as the lattice path problem in yeah, which uh, the it's algebraic tree, it's, a tree. Makes sense. it's not not on a, it's not lattice. It's free free non commutative group. There, we are, there should be a cross connection to free groups. And yes, yes, and this will be the kind of exactly developed for this uh, probability of uh, yes. well, that so matrices. It's there should be some. It's yeah. very, very, very clean. Mm.